How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another edition of our Q Time Zone lineup. This time, Slash Yell, the yeah. MMO show. Woo-hoo. For a second, I thought you forgot what show this was. <laughs> no, like, I like the, the way you're you entering. I, like, I was like, Emphasis. Does he con? Know what show this is? <laughs> oh, con. Oh, oh, I get it. I caught up with you. Sorry. Hi. I'm crude. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Mwah. And uh, I go, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Well, we've been away for two weeks, and really, it's just been, what, the con for you guys yesterday, World of Warcraft in general for all of us. We did spend quite a bit of time last show talking about it, and I figured we've got enough to talk about today that it's mostly it. I mean, Krug got his car towed. <laughs> we Not... can go over that if you'd like to. Yeah, sure. Yes. I Im- My car got impounded because it wasn't registered for eight months, and I left it at LAX, and apparently LAPD just trolls at LAX looking for cars with expired tags. Super expired tags if you're eight months behind. And then it got impounded, and then I went to the impound lot to pick it up, and while it was in the impound lot, it ran out of battery. So I had to Uber to a Pep Boys or whatever the fuck it's called and get a battery and then Uber back and then install a battery at the impound lot by myself because it's against their regulations to help you in any way touch the insides of your vehicle. And then I drove home. It was like the walk of shame, but with Uber, it was great. And by great, I mean fuck everything. <laughs> but now my car is back in my possession yeah, I, I and registered really... legally, so I don't have to drive down shady-ass alleys to get to work. See, your, your predicament reminded me that I have to do registration really soon, so mm-hmm. thanks for helping me out, buddy. Hey, you want a bit of advice? Don't it. not do it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Krug's advice. See, I find that funny. Uh, I've, I've driven around a few people here and there, and, and when they're not from the area, they always say the same thing. Like, man, you never, you always hear about LAPD, but you never see them. I'm like, motherfucking LAPD is like goddamn ninjas. Oh, that's they're, not true at all. They, they're everywhere. I don't know what the fuck. You're blind. They are really everywhere, but the the, the county and the city is so fucking huge that it's like, uh, you always tell me, I don't see them at all. They're right there. So They're it, like ninjas. They just show up when, when they need to be there, and they just disappear when afterwards. I learned a very valuable lesson that I think I can pass on to the internet from this experience. Our generation has started this meme where it talks about not knowing how to adult. Uh, like, oh, who who put me in charge of this? I'm not an adult. I need an adultier adult or something like that. And these are like, you know, 20-somethings uh-huh. doing shit like this. I think I figured out the secret to adulting for everyone. Uh, and Which that's is? just, if you have to do a thing, do the thing. And then you'll be fucking fine. <laughs> right? Yeah. If you have to do a thing... Do the thing. Just do the thing. Do the thing. That's that's it's the motto of adults. Do the, do the thing. And if you don't know how to do the thing, figure out how to do the thing. And then here's the, the key part of it is do the thing. Even if you don't know how to do the thing and you start doing the thing and then you're doing it wrong, the thing will stop you and be like, yo, you're doing me wrong. Here's how to do me correctly. And then you can continue to do the thing correctly. Speaking of doing the thing the right way, instead of talking about the thing, we have games to talk about. Oh, right? let's talk about games. So wait, this one's really confusing. So we were talking about it a little it's bit before. Or, well, the, the 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 we know what it is, but for some reason they re-release it with a different tagline. And what we're talking so about, it's Black Desert Online. Sorceress Awaken is is what it's like yeah. premised so as. In in Black Desert Online, they're starting doing awakenings for their classes. So basically. At level 56, uh, they basically give you... Five? Huh? Is it 55 or 56? 56. Okay. It's level 56, I remember. I know. It, I also wrote it down. It has uh, to say it's also in the notes. It's also in the notes. <laughs> I also wrote it down. The YouTube says 55, that's why. Well, their website says 56, so that's a discrepancy that is not created by QTimes. That is definitely a yeah, discrepancy right. It's not created us. by I'm the studio. I was just like, wait, yeah. something's off here. Huh. Technically, hmm. technically, it says after level 55... Oh, which, oh my god, which, that's at level bullshit. 56. Which would be right. level 56? That's, I guess. If I that's mean, the technically, wording, should like, say 56. Yeah, right? After level 55. Fuck you. Anyways, whatever. After level 2. <laughs> which is level 56, technically. Uh, so, anyways, at level 56, uh, it, you ha- get get access to five available awakening skills that you can train. And then you also get a fancy new weapon. So the the class they were going over this time was the Sorceress. And normally, the Sorceress's uh, attack animation is just like her hands and she's swiping with this like black magic. But once you complete your awakening quest after level 56, uh, you 
use a scythe, like a big scythe. And it's basically like the, the way I think about it is a legendary weapon in WoW. Like you, you're mm-hmm. using all these different weapons, and now that you, you're like past this certain milestone in your character progression, you can use the like ultimate like giga weapon. Uh, yeah, and then you get access to all these other abilities. It feels very WoWy to me. I don't know who did it first. It was probably them because they've been it, out it, in it was Asia for a billion yeah. zillion years. Uh, but yeah, that that's basically what it is. Uh, so if you go to the show notes, you can take a look at all the um, abilities. And then Black Desert's going to be releasing the Awakening, I guess, for each class as time goes on. So we'll keep you up to date on which ones they release and how cool they are. Uh, the sorceress one looks a little shitty. Like when I think of a sorceress, oh, I don't think of really. Yeah, when I think of a sorceress, and okay, it's not. It doesn't look shitty. Nothing in Black Desert looks shitty. It's just when I think of a sorceress, I think of like elemental magic. I think of like like the mystic arts. Her animations don't look like that. They look like necromancer shit, and that's well, maybe that's the from level that's their one. direction of sort because I mean, yeah, I, sorcerers I get they have their doesn't own. specifically mean elemental. I understand. I, I mean, understand. Yeah. It's so, just not uh, quite a wizard. That's unlike a wizard ca- archetype, which is normally formally trained with a large repertoire of skills. A sorcerer archetype typically is just raw power, a limited view, like like a limited selection of power, but just raw and bridled power. And the thing I kind of agree with you is it doesn't feel like a normal sorcerer. It's a, she's using a scythe, which is a fairly close range weapon, and using a lot of melee heavy and attacks. And like- I realized archetypically mm-hmm. tied to necromancers and then all of her yeah. magic is like black and evil and like disease looking and so it makes me think necromancer i don't know why that turns me off to the class so much but that's that's who i am but it, see the coolest thing coolest one out of all of them is when she just kind of like drops a barrage of just oh yeah crows. She, she's yeah, just that, like by the way motherfucking up. grows <laughs> like <laughs> oh yeah yeah i don't think we mentioned this there's a video that shows like the new abilities and new animations that she gets. Yeah, it's in it's attacks. in the chat right now. Oh, good. And it will be in the show notes. Um, yes, it will. When, yes, yeah, she she reminds me of a battle mage, like someone who's like a mage who's able to get and mix in there, like go go up close and just kind of trade blows. But the thing that stuck out to me was what Indigo said was there's this giant AOE centered on her, and my first thought was that ability is gonna blow in PvP because he looks like you have to be stationary and it's channeled, which means anyone wants a fighter just goes. <laughs> Are we done yet? For those of you who are listening. Okay, now I'll kill you. uh, Adrock backed away from his mic in a comedic fashion, and it was giggly. Uh, But anyways, it's not about what the sorceress is as a class, because we've already, we talked about this class a lot when uh, when the game was coming out. Uh, This is more about the the awakening part. I'm excited to see what all the new uh, weapons look like and like what they make the characters into after you get them, because I'm all for, you know, reanimating stuff, because it... for me, like changing the way abilities work or the way ability animations look in a game gives the game like a whole new feeling. It's like a brand new game, yeah. but it's totally not it's the same exact. A lot game. of people, a lot of people love the Heart of Thorns, uh, Guild Wars two changes they made to the classes, like the advancements they have. And mm-hmm. we're seeing it right now with World of Warcraft and their all and their alternate leveling with all the different specs. So I'm down for it. If anyone plays Black Desert, still plays Black Desert and knows more about the Awakening than we do, I'd love to know more about it from them because. To me, just this felt like a rehash, and I know you said it was a new, some new skills with a new weapon, but I, I'm not, I'm personally not sure what differentiates this from the sorceress enough. If it really is like the start of a legendary weapon skill set, that sounds pretty cool, but it doesn't seem like it's been conveyed that well. Hmm. All right, fair enough. I'm pretty, I, I feel pretty clear on it, but that's just me. Hmm. Black, uh, sorry, sorry, not black. Uh, uh, Blade and Soul. Blade and Soul, actually, their PvP Season 5 has just started. Uh, they've sh- get, given off and shown off some of the ranks and what rewards they're going to have. They're going to actually have two separate reward system, a weekly reward se- system, as well as an overall season reward. So if, if you don't get into it until halfway through, you're still going to get the opportunity to get rewards. Or if you're not the best in the world, you're still going to be able to get some stuff. They're only ranking the top 300 people, apparently. So uh, I'm just going to go over the, the weekly real quick. Um so rank one, two, and three, they will all get uh, 120,000 experience points, uh, two excellent experience charms, and one Naryu tablet. Is that right? Naryu tablet? Adirak. I'm looking yeah, at you, Adirak. So. Resident pronunciation. I think so. Some pronunciations are weird. Yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, that's one through three. Rank four and five will also get the same XP. They'll only get one uh, excellent experience charm, one Naru tablet. And then it drops down that the groups get significantly larger. Six through 60 will get between 20,000 and 90,000 experience points. One um, excellent uh, experience charm and one Naru tablet. 61 through 90 will get one excellent experience charm. So it's knocking off the XP as a, as a whole. And they will get a Naru tablet. And then rank 91 through 300, you will get between three to nine or uh, ordinary experience charms. Uh, now, if you actually manage to get into the seasonal rewards, you'll actually get a full-on costume set for your character. Adarok looks just completely blown away right now. Sorry, uh, we, were, we were doing one of the show notes, and I got a Twitter alert, and it was it's something not related to MMO, so let's keep going. <laughs> it's, it's actually... Sorry, it, it just hit me, because um, uh, have you guys watched like, Adult Swim yeah. back in the early days when it formed up? Remember Space Ghost Ghost... Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Yeah. The guy that voiced Zoltar and um, Molt, or sorry, uh, Zorak and Moltar, he died today. Oh, mm. that's sad. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I, di- I didn't mean to like derail it. But I was <laughs> no, just, it's, like, it's show no, 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 show no, show notes. And then right, the tab next next to me says, "Here's an alert," and it's like, dude, Clay Clay Martin Croker just, just died suddenly. Like, there's not even a cause. Sorry, let's go in. Let's it's go okay. back. <laughs> Like, it not, literally not, threw me for a loop. Yeah, no, no, no. It's fine. No, it's not a big deal. But, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on with uh, Blade and Soul. Uh, it, it, the re- seasonal rewards are pretty similar. You're just getting significantly more. Uh, you're also going to be rewarded Soul Stones and, um, you know, seals for the Tacon skins, Tacon? which I believe – what oh. is it? What is wh- – I don't know. I thought I knew how to pronounce that, but I super don't. <laughs> <laughs> so depending on where you land seasonal, they're also only giving the top 300 people for the full season reward. Uh, now, I don't know how many people – and this is 1v1, by the way. So I don't know how many people are actually going to be getting into this, if 300 is a lot of people, or if that's you know the top 1% overall. I don't know. Uh, moving on, uh, The Secret World. Now, this is actually really cool. It, we kind of caught it a little late because we were gone for a couple weeks. But The Secret World actually has a fun little game going on right now. So if you log in and play 70 challenges by September 21st, you will be rewarded the Doom Board, which is kind of like this dark, demonic skateboard looking thing or hoverboard. I don't really see wheels on it. Um, Doom Board. What, yeah, the Doom Board. Yeah, it says it's a hoverboard uh, in the in the thing. Oh. The Doom oh, Board is a healthy cover board that you enemies. can get for free only through the limited time challenge. Yeah. Uh, what's really cool about this is it's actually going to be account bound. So if you yeah. if you unlock it on one character, you lo- unlock it on all of them. So it's not like you have to rush through 70 challenges on all of your characters. Right. But you do have to do 70 on one single character. Right. Yeah, it doesn't aggregate that's, that's... the challenges between multiple characters. Yeah, so that that's the key to remember that. Um, and then the last kind of thing for Secret World is they've actually decided to add some reward bags, which they all of the free to play MMOs kind of have this same kind of system where it's just like random RNG bags. But they've actually opened up, and Wildstar just did this as well, uh, a retro bag. So you can actually have retro, and I'm going to quote from their website, all new retro bag and bulk retro bag filled to the brim with all your vintage fashion needs. You'll be looking boss with acid wash jeans, wrist brace, uh, bracers, belt bags, and more. For all your tubular trendsetters, you'll have the chance to rock the pair of quad roller skates and be envy of all your buds. Am I the only one that thinks it's funny that they're saying all new retro bag? Like yeah. it's brand new old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we but, package everything nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. The retro bag stuff, some of the stuff that look, that's in it's really cool. Uh, they also do a really awesome system where when you buy one of these retro bags or when you buy bags in general, you get a lucky coin with, with every bag that you enter. So if for some reason you don't get that item that you've really, really been wanting to get, you get a lucky coin. And you can actually turn around and use that later to get the actual item. That I you... love that system. Yeah, right. It's 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 boss. As... Like right now. <laughs> Right now, everyone's hunting for pieces to to uh, to upgrade in, in other games. 
and having that token where it's like, yeah, you know, you've run it a while, you haven't gotten it yet, but here, eventually we gave you this token, just go fucking redeem it. You, you spent the time on it, and RNG can only take you so far. Please, follow the Secret World's path more games in general. Yeah, like, the Secret World, and we, we say this a lot with Secret World, or at least I know I do, the Secret World has some awesome system set up in it that really make it player friendly and make it real in my opinion fair for both the player as well as the company you know the company is able to monetize these things but but not ripping off the players right yeah ten dollar um, cough <laughs> we haven't gotten a blizzard yet oh. uh, <laughs> so next is the division uh wow we are problems we're we're uh, blasting through this today. So the division is kind of started off and said, "Hey, these are our current problems that we see. Enemies with greater level than the players are too powerful after you after level thirty. The gap yeah. the gap between the worst and the best players are growing too large at level thirty. And this is a also, direct yeah. quote." quote quote from them we found that the at level 30 damage uh fluctuates in certain situations can be as high as plus or minus ne uh, plus or minus 264 percent between players and damage mitigation can reach plus or minus 250 percent at different uh of five times as powerful that's fucking it's bonkers yeah, that's a huge Crazy. margin. That's and those people are people getting melted and shit. Yeah, and those are yeah. people at the same level, which is the like yeah. in MMOs you expect to have, you know, differences in in ability that vast, but not at the same level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's uh, uh, that's then, quite a bit. And a lack of gradually in uh, a lack of gradual uh, granularity and difficulty. Ah. Thank you. In difficulty, <laughs> preventing players from uh, accurately approaching rewards. Yeah. So basically, what they're saying with that is that uh, some the, some gaps between gear are too large, so it feels like you're under geared for the next tier of gear. So yeah. uh, it makes it it makes that jump difficult. It's not like a smooth linear progression. It's kind of like boop boop boop. Audio people aren't gonna know what I just did. It's kind of like a plateau and then a very steep hill and then a plateau and then a very steep hill. Uh, which is frustrating for people because nobody wants to have to beat their head against the wall to get the next tier of gear. Like you, yep. you'd expect to beat your head against the wall if you were literally in the wrong zone. But if you're in the right zone for your level, you shouldn't feel like it's mathematically impossible for you to win. You know, that's that's a problem with with any game. Uh, so they they presented all of this and said, these are our biggest problems that we feel right now, and this is the solution. So it's not just like, hey, guys, this is where all of the things are fucked up, but here's also ways that we can fix this. So they're actually creating a better gear score system overall and how your gear is calculated number-wise. And then on top of that, they're actually adding the world tier uh, gear score system. So basically, in the world... You, there will be four different tiers. So depending on what your overall gear score is, depends on who's around you and what enemies around you. So you can't accidentally walk into a high level, like not high level, but you can't accidentally walk into a high gear score fight. So basically tier one will be people with gear score of zero to 163. Tier, uh, tier two will be 164 to 182. Tier 3 will be 183 to 204, and Tier 4 will be 205 to the max of 229. Um, so this is really cool because now you're not going to be facing people that are 300 times – I'm sorry, five times your gear score in the same world and just completely just smack you down and destroy you. They're also um, – they're also changing this so that your rewards will also be equal to your tier. So you're going to get rewards equal in what tier you're in will now equal to tier two stuff. So it's not like when you're in tier one and you're playing with the lowest level people, you're going to still get tier four gear uh, with gear score and just jump from tier one to tier four. You're going to have to go tier one to tier two to three to four yeah. to be able to do that. And that's preventing players from, you know, being really good players and just dropping all of their gear going to tier one and just wrecking face because they can, this yeah. is keeping people Where clean and honest need to be. They're also exactly. reducing the uh, maximum en enemy level 
from what it is currently, which is 34, between 34 and 35, to a maximum of 33 at tier 4. So presumably because they specify at tier 4, the max is going to be 33. At the lower tiers, you won't be facing those super out level enemies. Because you, as a player, you can't get to those levels. So they have like higher base stats than you and stuff like that. Presumably better gear, but we... I mean, I don't know exactly what, how that like math works out. Uh, so that's definitely going to help with the uh, lack of granularity and difficulty, quote unquote. Uh, the fact that they're limiting the average NPC's level based on tier. So that if you're in tier one, you're not going to be facing an NPC that a tier three person might face, you know. Uh, and, and the fact that the gear specifically scales to get you out of tier one into tier two is also going to help with that. Like the gear you get is going to be something that will push you towards your goal as opposed to, okay, either I have two choices, farm mobs that aren't going to get me gear to push me to be able to defeat the harder enemies or go up against the harder enemies that I can't actually defeat, leaving the only option, hey, can somebody who's already done this carry me? Like yep. that should never be your only option, you know? Um, and they're also introducing tiered rewards based off of what tier you're in, which is what I just talked about in that sentence. Uh, yep. The gear in tier one will push you into gear two. I'm sorry, the, now, the gear in tier one will push you into tier two? Not gear two, that's not a thing. There, There is one other option other than having someone that's better than you go through and do, do, run you through. It is uh, the get good option. Oh, oh, the get good. Is that a button that I missed or? Is that like several buttons do you form in quick succession over a long period of time? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made I, your bad joke funny. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was I thought the get good uh, key combination was Alt F four. Is that not what it is? Oh is that not what it is? It's the get good macro? No? Anyways, why don't you take us into Final Fantasy before we start the big huge news part, which you know Adarok thinks is sixty percent of the show. Well, we, you obviously might have drawn out the division part a little bit there. But this, I, I don't know much about. <laughs> I don't think it was drawn the out at all. The numbers game. The numbers it was, game. No, it, was, it was legitimate information. I'm having, I'm having fun with it. I'm having fun with legitimate it. Legitimate facts. Not saying you're wrong. I'm having fun with it. So this is going to be the exact opposite because I don't know much about Final Fantasy 15, but it seems to be said because I'm just fucking stoked for this. So 14, sorry. Final Fantasy 14's Heaven Ward has a few new patches coming out most recently. They just announced Soul Surrender, patch 3.4. I keep forgetting how gorgeous this game can be and then how extreme it can go into some rooms. In this video, it'll show you both. First off, if you ever played Final Fantasy IX, you remember the Alexander Summon, which is a giant castle. You just kind of summon this thing and it just wrecks house. It looks like they've done an updated version of the Alexander Castle where you essentially shadow the Colossus yourself up its fucking body and then fight inside it. This thing looks amazing, and the, the music core uh, that accompanies it is even better. And throughout the video, it's about six, seven minutes long, they're showing you some of the new features that show up inside of Soul Surrender, patch 3.4. It's got some bonkers stuff in here, some pretty epic dungeons and extra difficulties you may not have done before. If you if you want to go back and do them, there's obvious cosmetic stuff that always shows up. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Player apartments have shown up, and I don't quite know what their difference is between player apartments and everything else. A few people have said that there's no true housing in 14, and I can't, I, I, I've not played it, so I can't say yes or no to that. And apartments, I guess, are the stopgap for it. Who knows? But also, so I find really odd that they had to wait for Heaven's Ward and Patch 3.4 to happen was dueling areas and dueling arenas. So that I can't tell. Again, I'm not a player, so I don't know if dueling has been a consistent part of the game. But now you have spaces dedicated for it. And that's apparently a big feature of Soul Surrender. As well as the storylines that have happened in Heaven's War are getting continued on in Soul Surrender. With the obviously on par epic Final Fantasy voice acting go with it. Either way, uh, this is something that you should check out if you play the game. This this alone almost got me to want to try like, the game for a month and like work my way up there. Because that Alexander intro in like the first minutes is bonkers and gorgeous. And then they go into apartment housing, and it's like, we just 3D model the wall. We don't want to put textures on it. Let's just ship it into the game as is. Good job, 14. Hey, you can put fish in a fish tank, though. That's pretty cool. That's the most depressing assessment of game features. That I've ever <laughs> that shouldn't yeah, be. player housing 
I love player housing, and I also think it's so absurd at the same time because really it's stuff like that. I got a tiki design for my house. Okay, I got fish in a tank. What'd you get, Krug? Thumbs up. I got a, f- a refrigerator. I got a big old refrigerator. Yep. Yeah, it's no fish in a tank, but if that that's honestly <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes player housing in apartments always make, make me laugh like that. But that's mostly the Final Fantasy XIV stuff coming out. So Soul Surrender should be coming soon-ish. I don't recall if it had an exact date, but something to keep an eye on. World of Warcraft. The game Where do we everybody start? Everybody knows. Well, we start at the top of the notes, and then we work our way down. It's generally the path that we take in the show, Adrock. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, Legion's a thing now. Uh, we're super excited about Legion. We've been, been. We've been. We've been solid playing Legion. Uh, since it came out. I don't think we've played many other games, just been playing a lot of Legion. Uh, yeah. I am a uh, no monk. Indigo is a... I don't know what race you are. What race are you? Night Elf. You uh, can only be one. Oh. Okay. One, one, there's one horde and one alliance uh, mm-hmm. race allowed for night hunt, uh, demon hunters. Sorry. Night so hunters. I'm a night elf. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> night a, hunters. You're a night hunter demon night elf. Man. <laughs> they're night they're night men. Uh, so he's a demon hunter, and he's a... Uh, what's your main? Is it your shaman? Yeah, a dwarf shaman. A dwarf awesome. shaman. Oh, a dwarf. A dwarf shaman. Oh, what about that? I call down the lightning to strike you in the face. Anyway, so we're going to talk about some WoW stuff. Talking about, first of all, the September 13th hotfix where they uh, fixed some problems. Uh, so apparently, uh, Druid's Bear Form used to freeze resource decay for non Guardian Druids, which is OP as balls. Uh, right. So they fixed that so that it's no longer. Uh, broken in such a way that fucks with the way that your character plays uh, which is great thanks for that uh soul, Sar- soul shards now regenerate to three while out of combat up from one for warlocks which is cool it's that's good because they need a lot of love they're kind of on the weak scale all three specs right now yeah i didn't really like i'm that. just saying i'd rather be a warlock than uh, a paladin oh god yes in a heartbeat <laughs> yeah i tried so i i did the um what's the thing they released the i don't remember what the feature is called but it allows you to create a new character and then boost it to 100 and play through like a beginning. It's the new character trial. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. New character trial. Uh, play through like a beginning ship area where like uh, Matthew Mercer takes you through your character's abilities and then it's invaded by a legion and then you fight them. And then after that, you get full access to all of your specs and you can go do Broken Isles. And then you get to play in game until you get to a certain point. I forgot exactly what that point is. Um, and so I did that with a bunch of different characters that I hadn't played before, like Warlock and Paladin. Uh, I did it with Hunter that I hadn't played before. I did it with Warrior that I hadn't played before. That's four. I think that's all I did. Uh, and Paladin was awful, and I didn't like they Affliction taught you, Warlock at uh, all. Red, right? You had to be in Retribution. Right. The yeah, they teach you the yeah. DPS spec for every... Uh, any character you pick, it teaches you the DPS spec or a DPS spec. Uh, like, it teaches you Frost Mage. I don't know why. Uh, and... Fire's but yeah, once you're done with the tutorial, you can switch into whatever spec you want. Um, but yeah, it, Affliction was not that great. I, I couldn't even get into Broken Isles because I was just like, I'm not interested in this at all. Click. <laughs> I have a hard time with Paladins in most games. I just there for some reason the archetypal Paladin is so hard for me to to like enjoy. But there are some other fixes. There's two bigger fixes that will not be on the hotfix that I was part of actually. One belonged to the Shaman, and one belonging to a series of items. So there was a combination of three items in Legion. When used in tandem, allowed you to mimic flying in the Legion zones. They were a high mountain kite that you had to equip from four different pieces inside a high, mi- high, mi- high mountain. Then you can use it across the whole thing. It's like a goblin glider. Then there was a, a item you can buy called Brule's Fist, which the original version launched you up like 15 feet in the air straight up. It was a fun little combination toy. And then there was uh, a quest you did for Aviana, which is a feathered demigod that allowed you to propel yourself forward, called Emerald Winds. Well, individually, they're all three kind of cool trinkets. You just randomly get propelled as long as you don't touch the ground every second, as long as you keep hitting the button. One just shot you straight up in the air so you can kind of get to this random ledge like a demon hunter, but it shot you up higher so you can kind of get the higher ledges. And then one was a kite in case you fell. Smart players decided that if they shot themselves up in the air, then hit the kite, and then mash the shit out of the, out of the emerald winds. You were flying at at a at near uh, flight master speeds. Nice. And if you got yourself to a high enough point, that's ridiculous. You would just 
rocket yourself for a minute straight and can hit uh, almost across the entire playable area of the map without That's any interruption. Awesome. And That's I got a awesome. chance to do that for a few days, which is really fun. And, and you could do it once every, I think it was like every five minutes or so. Because the cooldowns were all relatively short. Because sure, no one expected sweet. you to use all three items in tandem. Blizzard found that out and then nerfed the fuck out of it. Where Brule's Fist only shot you up like two feet in the air. Which <laughs> means it completely uses a toy. Emerald Winds didn't get changed at all. And the kite had a much longer cooldown with, mm. I think, uh, a shorter activation period. So it was like, look... We know you want flying. We know you're lazy. Deal with it and run. So that was, was probably pretty funny well, when that, that got fixed. That defeats the purpose of an entire zone because there's a zone yeah. that you have to use. What's it called? Is it the grappling hook? Yeah, the, what, it's the strangle. Yeah, the Stormheim. Stormheim. Thank you. Uh, you have to use a grappling hook to like make your way up a mountain. With that combo, you could just like go to the top of a yeah. relatively high building and make it to the top without touching the mechanics that they wanted you to use in order to get to places, which I would so, uh, say is good because I got lost so many times in that zone. <laughs> like which grappling hooks, right? Where are the fucking grappling hooks, man? Uh, but that's just because I'm a so, fucking uh, what, idiot, so. Wait until you get to the last zone because the last zone, they, they don't have grappling hooks. They have these little tiny little things that you click on and oh, you throw so a rope and you, and you, and you go up and they're just, and you have to get in the really awkward, weird angles to be able to find them in the first place. So, Trust me, it's going to be way worse later on. Great. Thanks for that, guys. The biggest reason they found that out was when people unlocked the first secret hidden world boss in WoW, people were jumping off the side of Dalaran, and I thought they were using goblin gliders, which is pretty obvious. You fly yeah. for a, a minute, and then you kind of swim your way or water skirt your way over. People were just jumping off the edge of Dalaran, roll fisting themselves in the air, and then kite jumping and just zooming across the screen. And I'm like, how did that happen? Someone told me, and I instantly went and grabbed it and did the same thing. A day and a half later, it was hot fixed. And uh, for shamans, in Legion, when you do your order hall quest, quest, you basically have housing, essentially. You just can't customize it. It's just your own hangout area for you and people of the same class. Throughout the storyline, you recruit these champions that help you out. And a few of them will accompany you in the real in, in the game world, and they'll give you benefit, passive benefits. There was a orc shaman character that when you turned into your spirit mount your your just your travel form without hopping mm -hmm. onto a mount mount he would give you a hundred percent move speed but then the mount the the spirit animal itself would give you a 30 percent move speed so you were jetting across the ground at 135 move speed percentage and racing past everybody and i was loving it i was telling indigo on the thing i'm like i just zoom right past him zoom right past him again zoom right past him again and then they just said, well, that was a mistake. That wasn't supposed to happen. So now he's just 100% move speed and people are sad. Why take away my fun, Blizzard? Why you got to take away my fun? <laughs> I just, I just want to fly like an eagle through the seas and just race across the ground. Fly like an eagle to the sea. Yeah. So those were part of the hot fixes that weren't super recent but were notable. Mm-hmm. We also managed to get a really awesome patch 7.1 preview. This looks so fucking cool. Like, I can't wait to do this. So it's introducing a new dungeon, which is going to be Return to Karaza, uh, which I'm, Karazan. again, Karazan, whatever, you fucking Nazi. Karaza. Uh, <laughs> I got a real place. It's going to be a five-man mythic dungeon. Krug, get to fucking... 110 already. I'm almost 108. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm 21% away from 108. What's really cool about this is it's actually going to be a nine boss dungeon. Ooh. So it's going into longer format dungeons. Yes. Give me that. Which, which is, which is, I mean, which is great for the first couple times you do it. And then no one wants to ever queue for it. <laughs> Cause then they're like, oh, well I can get three of this dungeon done or I can get one of this one done. Um, but the places you're going to be going is you're going to be going to the opera house. Uh, you're going to battle the butler Mora. Was it Moro? Moros yeah, is that Morrow. his correct name? Moros. And you're going to make uh, you're going to make your way under the tower itself, where reality is thin and not everything is how it seems. Wizard magic, hocus pocus, bullshit. We can do whatever we want in this game because magic is real. You can fight plates and books. Yeah, We're lazy at characters. Upside down Karazhan's really a thing, and old school Karazhan's still around. We mentioned a few a while back that if you still want to farm old school Karazhan, it'll still be there. Just now you have the Return to Karazhan, which is all this new fun stuff. Mm-hmm. 
I'm excited for this. I'm really looking forward to it. I, I, I'm hoping that Krug is is uh, of proper level and item level by that time, so the three of us can jump in there. Hopefully, uh, you guys. So, you guys are going to help me get through mythics, right? Like the mythics that we have right now. Hopefully, so can... if we can get you up there first, you got to get to you, heroes you gotta first. Get, you've got to get to freaking eight ten before you can get there. I'm almost at eight ten. <laughs> so as we've been playing, it's because I have a bunch of odd jobs essentially while I look for a real job I have time to play so I am, I legitimately am raid ready I hit the threshold for raid at minimum requirements Indigo has been playing when he gets home and he's he's gotten pretty far he's pretty far up there actually he's not far behind me and Krug has like the most time intensive job as, as the rest of us and we also found out he's a shit piss poor slow leveler yeah oh he's, like, he's fucking so, worse I'm and he's got AD. mathematically this character's great I'm gonna roll a new one yeah this that's my main great. that's my main problem is that I started Oh, God, excuse me. I started uh, Priest, and I was super into Priest healing, and then I started doing, like, solo leveling stuff when Adrock and Indigo weren't on, and the fucking Shadow Priest is just, oh, God, kill me with this. Just poke my eyes out. I could not <laughs> handle Shadow Priest. It's awful. Shadow Priest is like, oh, hey, your sustain phase is, like, four and a half hours long, and uh, you do absolutely no damage, and then your burst phase is like forty-five seconds long, and you still don't really do that much damage. Uh, it's like a dick. And then I was like, maybe I'm playing it wrong, and so I like d looked up all the theory crafting crap, and I'm not. I was playing it right. Maybe not super like optimally or like the best shadow priest in the world, but I wasn't like I had all the talents picked correctly. I was doing the right rotation or relatively close to the right rotation. It's just I didn't like it. Like I could not stand it. Uh, and then I switched to Monk, and Monk fucking is just, oh, God, give me that Monk, baby. Oh, I love Monk so much. I love Monk so much. Oh. Well, so now I I'm guess Monk. The, the biggest piece of news, though, for Legion is that about a week ago they announced the, can the companion app, which allows you to monitor your class order hall goings on yeah. while you're away from your computer. It will so, kick you off the game, so you can't just be which... multitasking on the game and then also on your phone at the same time. And I knew you were going to do that, Krug, and I was about to do the same thing too while I was talking. <laughs> but before we get on to our last, uh, our last game, what have, what have our opinions been of Legion so far as it's one of the bigger releases of the year? Especially so MMOs. My, my, first, my first overall opinion is going to be, fuck you, Poodle Corp. Because they're the ones that keep DDoSing them, and they're currently DDoSing them right meow. Oh, that's what was going on. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Poodle Corp. I've never heard of them. What? Yeah. What what are you what in Krug? Oh, DDoSing uh, Blizzard right now? Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. So if you're having difficulties getting on right now, uh, that's why. So be aware of that. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, they, uh, go for it. I was going to say the launch, actually, if you wanted launch. to talk about DDoSing, was probably the smoothest of any MMO I've ever played. They, and they the joke also, was they also the game got DDoSed. Fucked, so it was great. Me. It got DDoS yeah. then as well, but like, I mean, it's gonna after. be a, it's gonna be a constant fight for them for the first couple months. In my at least that's one thing because it's still got a lot of hype behind it, and a lot of people are really honestly happy about this this expansion. That I think that they're just gonna shit on it because it people are enjoying it, and that's how they can get their name out there. So uh, I I I think that that they're just really enjoying that part of it. But as for like the game itself. So I hopped on to a Demon Hunter as my character, as my main, and I freaking love it. I, I I love the changes that they made for, like, the the new garrisons, basically, which is the class halls. So much better. How they've handled it, the fact that the companion app uh, exists now. And so now I'm not sitting there going, having to figure out timing. Like, all right, well, I won't, probably won't be home until this time, so I should do this kind of quest, or well, I'm going to do this. But I really should be doing my you know, my class quest that's in there. And if I do my class quest, I'll be able to actually, you know, progress with this, but then I won't, I'll have like eight hours where it won't be doing anything. Like I can just pull up my app and be like, Oh, cool. Done. Like I can do quests that are the most efficient and best timing wise. Um, I, I, the, the dungeons have been extremely fun. Even the really punny, uh, tree in uh, uh, Dark Heart Thicket, where yeah. it's my bark is worse than my, my bite. bite. <laughs> um, I, I've really been enjoying the the whole expansion. I don't think there's anything really about the expansion that I haven't enjoyed, other than the one quest that I'm on right now, which is it's a quest for everyone gets, and it's you have to get four items, one from each one of the different um, crafting uh, specs, the the cloth. 
uh, leather and armor. And then I forgot what the fourth one was, but so it's a it's a freaking nightmare. And so I looked on the auction house before I logged on to get all four of those items on the auction house. It's gonna cost you twenty four thousand gold to get it all. Womp. It's a lot Which of gold, lot even of by have. the fact that we accumulate gold. A lot of people have that. Like a lot of people that are playing been playing for a long time, like the last two expansions have like hundreds of thousands of gold. But still I, I agree with you. It's it's a gougy, gougy experience. Uh you have anything else to add into Google? No, I no, I'm good. So my experience with Legion has also been very positive, but probably for different reasons. I've never been a part of a game that has been around for so long that it feels comfortable so drastically changing the way all of its classes work. And that experience is probably the best for me so far. Like, not just, like, tweaking the meta slowly as you go mm -hmm. along, like fucking uh, Wildstar, like, made some changes to the way specs worked in certain classes, but it never... It never fully changed how every spec for every class works simultaneously. Uh, and and that feeling is really good. Like, it, it feels like a brand new game. Because that's the thing you interact with most. Like, you interact with your character and your abilities the most. And so, going from pre-Legion uh, uh, Mistweaver healing to post-Legion Mistweaver healing, for example. Two completely different, like, play styles there are similar like threads between them like you still have the like uh, soothing mist you keep soothing mist on your character uh, on your you know main heal target and then you use kind of hots to keep everyone else up and aoe to keep everyone else up and switch off of your main to a different person if one person you know is taking an extraordinarily high amount of damage so there, there are like similarities there but like all the animations are completely different and then like a huge majority of the actual abilities do different things to accomplish the same goal. So it, it, it just feels like a completely different game. And that's awesome. Like having that feeling that I get to explore all these characters again is awesome. So I, I'm loving it. And also the dungeons are fun and Indigo and Adrock are playing with me. So it really can't be boring because we just make fun of Indigo and stuff gets a little boring and, and you know, <laughs> getting to experience Indigo losing thread on everything again and, Figuring out why oh, he's not. Oh, I don't have. Oh, God. Figuring out how he's not in his tank spec, even though the dungeon automatically switches you into the spec that you're so supposed to be in. So has yet to happen. <laughs> has not happened. Don't even there was that one dungeon. We ran. Oh, what was the dungeon that we've run the most? The one where you fall down the water chute? Yeah. At the very yeah, Notharian's Lair. Yeah. What? What's it Notharian's called? Lair. Notharian's Lair. So we've, we ran that dungeon the most. We've run that dungeon so many times, it's not even funny. And we've never had problems with it. In this one run, maybe our, like, 17th run of the dungeon, Indigo's just dying, dying. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? I don't I don't understand what life means. And then we get halfway through the dungeon, and it just stops happening. And I'm like, what did you do? And he just goes, nothing. I don't know what's... I don't know. I really have no I idea. literally didn't do anything different. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah, it was, it literally just was like, hey, you're good now. Yeah. <laughs> it, was it was like... I don't know, lag? I don't fucking... Yeah. yeah. Anyways, well, it was fun. I, I like. I, I found my class. I found my main. Monk's gonna be my life because I enjoy the healing spec and I very much enjoy the DPS. Spec. You're just really bad at it. No, I'm just not geared for healing yet. Okay. But that's what I, after doing all the research, monk healing is highly gear dependent. Like you're oom um all the time if you don't have gear. So I, I just need to get the gear for it. But I'm just gonna focus on finishing DPS because that's what I started with, and then I'll uh, switch over to finding healing stuff for myself. Uh, anyways, Adrock, what are your thoughts, sir? My thoughts on it, the biggest the biggest thing that I loved so far about this expansion is that whenever games put out new content with new areas to explore, they tend to feel gamey. And it's a hard word to really like phrase out. Where it, it feels like it's very obviously been like part of a progression. It, it's very segregated and 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 uh, isolated from the theme of the thing, where it's like, we're going to Egypt. You only get, like, a square sandbox of Egypt to play in. And Legion's biggest draw to me is the fact that the Broken Isles and the and Dalaran and everywhere else in Suramar, they don't feel like you're, you're segmented. They're completely seamless in how you're going through and weaving through your experience. That, to me, is something that, I, that I've not seen a whole lot of developers put the conscious effort into 
mm-hmm. and that really does do a lot. Like Suramar City itself is breathtaking, and it is massive, and it is immersive. There's hidden NPCs. Like I just found one the other day that you have to be disguised to go through it, and if you get caught, you can get in big trouble. They'll give you extra stuff to be like, if you get caught, use this instead. But they're all hidden nooks and crannies. It entices you to, to go out and to just go through and explore every little nook and cranny. The hidden world boss that was released was something that was just by pure luck, essentially, that happened to be trial and error after finding something weird. That living, breathing world really, really has drawn me into it. And the, the threads that they weave throughout the experience that leads you to the dungeons, that'll lead you to Suramar, that'll lead you to the Court of Stars and the Arcway, that'll lead you to, mm-hmm. to raiding. They make you care about everybody in there, to the really old Grandma Torrin that fu- fucking makes you slow down and have to walk backwards so you complete the quest. Yeah, that's what we're, to... talking, that's what we're talking about in chat. Fuck Ethel. Ethel's a dumb bitch. <laughs> Ethel... And then you get like little, like little Moosey, Moses Cow that you save. And, and oh, God. Ev- even the weak parts, in my personal opinion, I'm not a huge fan of Night Elf lore. And Night Elves, they're just haughty, douchey motherfuckers. And yet, I found myself going... Yeah, Val Shiraz pretty cool. Demon Hunter is not all that your wrist Hawthorne Heights fans. So, okay, I'm cool with this. They, they, the stereotypes have, have, in their own game, have been slowly breaking. We're dealing with crack addicts as our main comrade. Like the, the whole world's gone to shit, and the game really reinforces the fact that you are fighting a losing battle in a world that is still teeming with life, and that's super, super cool in my book. So I, I, I just liked all of the withered and the, like, so the chat is asking what our favorite quests are or, and I, for me, it's not specifically a quest. It's like a quest zone. I really like, uh, Surmar and I really love the withered and the whole story behind them. The fact that they're all addicted, you know, crack. crack addicts, basically like I just, crack. yeah, yeah, basically. I love that, and I love the fact that you've got this like little zone that, as you progress in quests there, that the zone gets brighter, and you gain teleporters, and the tree there grows, and like it adds a lot to it, and I think it's really interesting. Uh, what about you, what about you My favorite quest. That's a tough one. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, my favorite storyline is the one where you get the tier of is something something. Adrock, do you know what I'm talking about? It starts I'm with sorry, an repeat I. that again. The tier of something. It starts with an I. I tier remember. of a loon. Yeah, the tier of a loon. I don't. I don't know. So if... It starts with an E. A loon. Oh, does it start with an E? Whoops. Yes. Uh, a loon's so... a major lore character, and she got a big thing in this expansion. Yeah. So that that quest line was the one that got me most involved, just because of the way it was presented. Like normally, when I'm questing, I skip through all this shit, and I just I actually have an add on that when I right click on a quest giver, it automatically turns in all my quests and automatically gets any new quests. So I don't have to read anything like the window doesn't even pop up. I just get quests. Uh, but I, I actually disabled that for that zone after a while because I was like, wait, wait, wait hold on. Something cool is happening and I want to know what it is. Cause I don't know what it is. I can just tell it's cool. And by the end I was just like, <laughs> Oh my God, this is actually happening. Okay. Uh, that sucks. Uh, what the fuck's happening in wow right now? Like everyone's dying that I don't. Yeah nobody's this surviving. Is the Empire Strikes Back of expansions. Yeah. It, literally, <laughs> they're like, we're tired of our NPCs. Let's get rid of all of them. Like, <laughs> it's just like, okay, guys, yeah, calm we the actually fuck down. Ha- we actually did like a talk amongst ourselves talking about which characters are left from what groups now. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah. huh, only X, Y, and Z. And we're trying to avoid spoilers because obviously people are still going through the content. Sure. I myself don't have a favorite quest line. My favorite zone to be in right now is High Mountain. I love the Torrin. I love the Fell Torrin. Uh, I love the Echero stuff. But really, my favorite parts are actually exploring and seeing what kind of nooks and crannies to get into. There's a treasure chest hidden in, I think, in High Mountain where you go and find it and you click on it and stuff, but then you find out you're duped. And it's very funny because it's very obvious signs that say, hidden treasure in here. You walk closer. Hidden treasure to the left. And then you get ambushed by a group of players. And you end up having to, to kill them to get your loot. And the whole time you're just wrecking the, wrecking the fuck out of them. And they're arguing amongst themselves like, healer, what the hell? You're not healing me. It's not my fault. The DPS is oh. is dying to everything. Oh. It's not my fault. I, you have to move. And it's little things like that that I loved. Or or, 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 or walking in on a human having a threesome with two Torin. That was fucking hilarious. I, never, I, thought that was I haven't done that yet. Don't spoil that. I want to change mine. I want to change mine. When you do the, the quest to get the monk 
Mistweaver legendary weapon. That is my favorite quest hands down. Basically what happens is that you land, like you're, you're flown to a location by a monkey, and then you land, you get off, and you meet a tank that's at like 1 HP. And he's like, oh fuck, a healer's here, thank god, please heal me. And then you heal him, and then he's like, alright, cool, we're gonna fucking get this boss now that you're here. And I'm like, why didn't you come with a healer in the first place? You're a moron. So you walk in, and you fight a boss with this tank, and there are cages, like, around the boss. And then it doesn't tell you anything about what those cages are. And then at some point, you're just like, this thing isn't taking any damage. What are these cages? And you go and interact with one, and it frees a companion. And then your party increases by one. So you get, like, a DPS, and then another DPS, and then another DPS. So you have a, a dungeon group of NPCs now. And they're all fighting this boss. And then you kill the, the first boss, and then you go into the next room, which is completely empty, and the DPS stands there, and they're like, all right, tell us what to do. And you can click on each one of them, and you can say, hey, buddy, just just worry about keeping yourself alive. Like, I need you to focus on you, and, and you know, don't go crazy doing damage. Or you can tell them, fuck it, I got your back. Go fucking ham. Stand in the red. I don't give a fuck. And so I told all of them to do that, and they were just like, <laughs> they didn't care about like, they ran towards things that were harmful. Like, ah, I'm going to go over here. <laughs> and just started, like, going. I was just like, this is the best quest. And there needs to be more healer-specific quests in WoW. Nobody's going to agree with me about that, but there, I want I, I like that one. I have to try it. I've now, now try it. this isn't a level specifically what I love, but I love the little tiny voice acting that they added to, to different yeah. things. Like, like it's important. just... The subtle, like you running past, and instead of like when you aggro an imp, instead of just the wah, 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 sound, you actually get like kill him, kill him now. You know, like you you get like little tiny voices and little tiny of like you hear the you're demon? dead. Do you hear the demon what? that says, "I'm gonna shove this slice up your ass, baby"? No, Do he doesn't. Yeah, he does, man. No, he doesn't. Yeah, it's Shut the, up. Yeah, it's the one. No, in, you know that zone no, where the, the no, 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 just just stop. All right. Uh, so I mean, there's a whole bunch of them like that. Like there's so much as the Ukuduka quest where you have to go get like you have to sweet talk this female uh, monkey. I forgot what they're called uh, Ukers to give her like a, I'll give you like a buff to go fight a human or a human Pokemon tournament. Yeah. And there's two yeah, options. You can be hilarious. nice to her or you can insult the crap out of her and she's you go back and forth just smack talking each other. There's a uh, two quests in Azuna, one where you sell your soul to an imp and the imp just hops on your shoulder. And yeah, just talks to you the whole time you're killing oh, yeah. things, and then you yep. get a toy was... at the end that brings it back, and it says something yeah. like, "I knew you need more orders from me" or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a uh, one I keep thinking I love a whole lot. There's a demon hunter and a warlock who remind me very much of like a lethal weapon rush hour kind of combo, oh, where they or like they basically hate each other, but they're forced to work together. And so as you go through these quests, they're both like, "Yeah, screw you, buddy. Screw me. I just want to kill him. I, I want to do this and that to him." And they slowly start to begrudgingly respect each other, which is I just thought was highly enjoyable. There's a lot of stuff in this game. Uh, I, if you followed our talks about Legion throughout Slash Yell, you've noticed my running theme is I'm always, Indigo calls it being super negative. I'm super reserved and, and really cynical and critical of things because I want to make sure that they're great when they come out. And I want to know that, yeah, I, as long as I know what can be wrong, I, I'm kind of, I'm actually kind of cool with it. I, I, I have a, a threshold of like, it's not keeping my bar low of like expectations. This is more like, look, you guys had the time to put in and make a great product. And so far, Legion, despite my criticisms of, of it in the past, and still I have some more of them, it has wholly satisfied me the way that very few games have in the last two years. The way that very few women have. Also in the past two years. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Legion, I, I, it's not even a month old. I don't want to. I want. I don't want to jump the gun and call it the best expansion ever. But my initial reservations of it being the the super fan servicey uh, expansion, which I still wholly believe this thing is like fan, fan central circle jerk soggy biscuit of an expansion. Oh, it God. is. It, it's taken its B team that they claimed that they had hired for for like warlords went on all the extra time and and whatnot. They have delivered a really solid rock hard experience that. It, it's it's kind of set the bar again for other companies to try and match. Phrasing, dude. Fucking phrasing. <laughs> well, I knew exactly what I was saying. Phrasing for that entire rant, just phrasing all over. So we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end end the wow talk there. We only got a couple minutes left, so we're gonna we're gonna hop over to our last section, which is LFG, where we're gonna talk about games that have not that aren't to flourishing yet, but aren't quite there. 
Uh, and so the first, and I think the only game we're going to talk about, yep, just confirming that, is going to be my favorite, Crowfall. So I actually got to play a little bit more Crowfall, and I got to play the new uh, hero, or not hero, the next uh, uh, archetype. Uh, it was so much fun. I loved being the berserking bull, just running around, just spinning in circles, and like hitting people with axes. It's a ton of fun. I'm getting a bunch of footage as much as I can to uh, put it together, and I'm going to make a quick little video for you guys eventually. But that being said, the first piece of the news about Crowfall that we're going to talk about is the UI updates. So Adorok's going to immediately complain and just say how shitty it is and how uh, bad it is. It's, uh, no, it's, uh, there's the tangential lines don't complement the spherical nature of the UI elements. <laughs> I haven't seen the whole video, but just the <laughs> screenshots that I'm kind of clicking through right now, I am so much more happy with their their design elements now. Oh. They're easier to read. They're not as super clunky and, and mm -hmm. weird as they were in the first build. Oh. You could tell that they've been streamlining it. Okay. Yeah. That said, the... it's still in alpha. Yes. And absolutely. you can tell what they're going for, and it's really obvious. So the big thing that they're talking about in this video, at least, is the fact that each element is actually its own individual piece. So before they were talking about if you wanted to increase the HP like size, uh, it would actually increase something else somewhere else because it retained like the same box or the same like metadata. And so now everything is completely separate from each other. You can move anything around wherever you want. Yeah, that's the big part is the ability to move stuff around. So like you can customize yeah. your UI without grabbing an add-on to yep. move stuff around like uh you can move the health bar mana bar and and stamina bar like as one chunk around and like your hunger bar you can move your uh and they actually introduced this the um oh, what's it called the uh the damage on the armor thing uh, i'm just gonna call it the damage duration on the nope that's not what no called. uh durability durability thank you the durability um meter you can move and then your action bar, you can move. Unfortunately, so I use a, a, a mouse like this. I don't know what to call it. I forgot what the name of the mouse is, but it has the fuck ton of buttons on the side, 12 buttons on the side. Uh, so I like to have my action bars in a three by three grid because that's what th like my mouse is, a three by three grid. You can't do that kind of like that level of customization, but you can move yeah. individual. Yeah, yeah. As of now, you can't do that. Super alpha, subject to change, obviously. Uh, but the stuff they have so far is, is good. Like this, if I wasn't using this, this would be adequate for my needs. Like the ability to, to put things on the screen where I want to see them as opposed to where they think I want to see them because chances are they're going to get it wrong for me. Maybe mm -hmm. they're going to get it right for a majority of people, but not for me. Actually, I wouldn't even say chances are they're going to get it right for a majority of people. I'd say chances are they're going to get it right for no one because everybody's going to want to change something. Maybe something small. Oh, yeah. Maybe they're going to want to change everything but you're never going to be able to hit exactly what everyone wants. So this is the best solution for that. Um, and yeah, it's cool. You can, you can uh, meet the dev who's designing the UI and uh, hear him talk a little bit about what they're doing. Um, and there are a lot of videos about the UI. If you want to get like more information about the design, like for example, all the icons on the action bar have a specific meaning based on their shape and color and stuff like that. So you can, learn more about that because that honestly is i think the coolest part of the ui how they differentiate based on the icons for the abilities but that's a different video uh, uh and then they they go into a couple other things about dps and crafting and how the bars work for that and like a separate ui like it's in the same ui video and how th they basically just give you a real brief glimpse of of that ui and how that works but they're they're saying look we're still trying to find something that works really well for us to turn around and be able to um make it work for everything once we find one that works for for one class we're going to then sweep it across all of them is basically what they said uh then they actually turned around and showed us uh because right now all of the archetypes are a specific um race or not race a specific sex so it's the the female uh, ranger the male uh champion now they've actually showed their gender variants. So the male, they're showing off the male ranger, which is pretty cool looking. Like, he actually looks really cool. It kind of reminds me a little bit of... Um, Game oh, of what's Thrones. That? Yeah, Game of Thrones kind of feel to it. Um, yeah. and then, I didn't even know who thought that. I just looked at it and I was like, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. That's what he means. Yeah. It's all the And pelts. then they show... 
they show the female variant of those costumes and kind of like the gear so that you can see that, hey, look, like this is correlating to like when the male decides to, the male ranger decides to wear plate or leather or cloth like that's just basically what they're they're showing off then the next is the actual champion they're showing the female champion which i also think legitimately is a really good look for it like usually they try to like severely over sexualize like the characters and while the the first one is a little bit but then you look down at the male equivalent and you're like all right i can kind of see it like yeah they're and then they're they're similar. Oh my god, English! They are similarly clothed, so the yeah. male is wearing just as much clothing as the female. It seems like in each step of the progression, uh, which is you know, that's equality, right? That's good. <laughs> and like it's the ranger, not just that, but it's it feels like it fits in the class fantasy and exactly. It, it feels realistic enough to be worn, not just to be shown off. The ranger's equipment also doesn't really sexualize the ranger at all oh yeah no no no, not like, at all you you look at these and you're like oh yeah these are really like non-gender specific pieces of clothing it's like the only reason you can tell that these are made for a female is because of the curve not the anything mm. else like, yeah crow falls art teams had a really fun balance of practicality or form over function yeah. Or, sorry, function over form. Whereas other games, it's right. form over function. Where it's like, does it look cool? Black Let's give that. it something. We'll, we'll 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 kind of like make Blade it. Blade and soul. Crown <clears throat> falls like, hey, uh, excuse me. This it, we can make it look pretty, but does, every does Final Fantasy game fantasy, ever made, right? <laughs> excuse me. And <laughs> does it is it ceremonial or is it practical? And they've chosen to give a world where it's it's kind of bleak and and dingy and there's shit happening. So their 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 character react so i really really appreciate that yeah for shizzle my nizzle and then uh, the last little uh, piece i'm just gonna give this piece of information out for you guys i'm not gonna go into it yeah, we're because already we're over already over time and not only are we are already over time it's a freaking ton yeah, of information a, like seven um, page reddit thing yeah uh there was a reddit ama with uh jay todd and gordon and they just kind of go and do an AMA. <laughs> Ask me anything. Go for it. And so uh, it's a ton of information there. Go there. Check it out. These guys are th one of the most open companies making and currently in alpha of a game that I've seen thus far. Yep. So because check it out. Because they kickstarted $7 million, they're allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Awesome. So that being said, you guys have had all the information. That's going to be it for us on this week's uh, MMO news slash yell. So uh, we're going to say our goodbyes. If you guys want to get a hold of me, you guys can get a hold of me at Indigo uh, QT on Twitter or Indigo at QTimes.com. If you want to tweet all three of us, you can tweet us at underscore QTimes. Krug, what's the best place for people to get a hold of you i am at crew qt on twitter i'm also krug at qtimes.com if you want to reach out via email and if you want to email all three of us you can email yell at qtimes.com and if you want to ad rock what's the best place to get in hold of you at ad rock draws on twitter is the best place in fact if you're going to be in the upper la area like passing you next weekend you see me face to face at NerdBotCon. Ooh, so I'll, be, I'll be vending there. You can touch his sexy man beard. You're you're also gonna be the uh, uh, at, at least ask first. Don't ask. First. There's a fucking fly in my room. It's so annoying. You're you're also gonna be at Kamikaze. Is that correct? Yeah, we'll be vending at Kamikaze, and we'll have hopefully some new, new mer merchandise for Kamikaze in store. Uh, awesome. Nothing World of Warcraft themed uh, yet. Possibly maybe a print. I'm not sure, Ooh. but definitely Ooh. we have some stuff. You have to draw Illidan. You know that, right? Oh, draw him wearing like a bro hat. <laughs> Thanks for checking out the show, guys. We'll see you next week. We're not, unfortunately, doing any streaming after the show today because we're going to go work on stuff. But uh, we'll see you next week at 3 p.m. PST for Quarter Up. 5 p.m. PST for Slash Yell. Same as today. Same as every week unless I get my car impounded. Mwah. Again, see you guys on the forums. Bye.